Good afternoon. This is your News for Now update. I'm Adam Cooperstein. A family of three is dead after an overnight fire up in the Hudson Valley. Firefighters say those flames so intense they just couldn't save the family. They were trapped inside the house in Monroe when those flames broke out just after one this morning. And here's News 4's Linda Baccaro with the latest. You can see a home behind me here on Highland Avenue, still smoldering at this hour, several hours after a fire overnight took the lives of three people in the home. This is a horrific tragedy. Investigators still here on the scene, combing through the charred remains of the house. This all started at about 12.55 this morning. Monroe police and fire arriving on Highland Avenue and found the home completely fully engulfed in flames. The flames so intense that first responders couldn't go inside, so they immediately began trying to put out the fire, and at that point is when they discovered the three victims inside. Their names haven't been released pending notification of next of kin. A neighbor tells us they had several pets as well, described them as good people. And again, Monroe and Orange County officials still investigating at this hour. There is no word on what caused the fire, but three people killed at their home in Monroe. This is Linda Baccaro in Monroe for News 4 New York. Just a heartbreaking story there. And we're getting new information now in the case of a New Jersey teenager who took her own life after she was bullied. Ocean County prosecutors say an additional complaint has been filed against one of the four students charged in the case. That student from Central Regional High School is now charged with conspiracy to commit aggravated assault on top of the previous charge of harassment. Earlier this month, 14-year-old Adriana Kush killed herself two days after she was attacked by a student while three others recorded it and then posted the video on social media. And if you or someone you know is struggling, help is out there and available anytime you need it. Just call or text the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 988. We are getting a look at a terrifying jewelry heist that happened in Queens. The NYPD says two men pistol whipped a woman who was working in this store in Flushing and then took off with $500,000 in jewels. This happened at the Diamonds by Direct store. Police say that employee is now recovering. Well, it looks like having more police in the subway system isn't keeping people from jumping the turnstiles, but they aren't getting away with it as much. According to the NYPD, fare evasion enforcement skyrocketed the last three months of 2022. New numbers show the police made 601 arrests and handed out more than 13,000 summonses for fair evasion between October and December of last year. That's compared to 477 arrests and 11,200 summonses in the period before. Now, the head of the MTA says policing fair evasion can often prevent larger scale crimes. Here's some good news for PSE and G customers. For the second straight month, the company says it will lower gas rates. The new rates go into effect on March 1st. Residential customers will see the gas supply rate go down by about three cents per unit, and that should reduce your bill by about two and a half percent. Not bad. Mayor Eric Adams is taking a little bit of heat now for posting a video of his ice bath. This is from Instagram. Mayor Adams showing his ice bath from last month and how a certified trainer walked him through a breathing course. And while the post did get more than 4,000 likes, as you'd imagine, there were some negative comments as well. Some of them saying it should have been put on a personal page. Others say they just like the post to be about his job. It really has been a wild couple of days here, and the next few will also be pretty interesting. Today, though, we're kind of stuck in the clouds in the wake of our wintry mess. Now, tomorrow, we do have the changes. We get the brighter skies, but it's going to be blustery. You're going to feel the difference. It's actually going to feel like February again, and that is definitely the case as we get into Saturday with temperatures recovering by the end of the weekend. So it looks really complicated, our map, but this is the boundary that to help supply just enough cold air to produce that sleet and the snow and that freezing rainfall that gets kicked out of here. The winds pick up tomorrow, so that cold air continues to pour on down. Overall, a pretty quiet weather weekend, but temperatures are allowed to rebound heading into Sunday. So in the short term, heading into the afternoon, we're generally in the 40s, that the clouds are going to be a little bit tougher to scour out, but they do eventually by tomorrow. And with temperatures into the 40s to start off with, it's actually going to feel more like the 30s by the afternoon, despite all that sunshine. Then you get that chance for some more sunshine by Sunday. Back to you. Okay, that's some real winter right there, and that's it for now. I'm Adam Cooperstein.